Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy, where we take philosophy, mix it with beer, and apply it to the questions you deal with every day. Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy. I'm Anastasia here with Mike and John, and this week we're discussing uniqueness and aesthetics and anal retentiveness. But before we get started... Six Pack Philosophy does anal. There you go. That, that's, that, that's, that's a good one. But before we get... Wow. What are we drinking, guys? We are drinking gingerbread stout. From the Buffalo Bayou Brewing Company in Houston, Texas. I actually used to live right down on the Buffalo Bayou when I was a kid. Uh, that explains a lot. It, it kind of does. It kind of does. Uh, I was just kidding, but okay. It was in the finest part of, of, of Houston, let me tell you. It was in the... Uh, Anything that says bayou is always the finest part the of finest everywhere. Part, finest part of the city. I don't know. I feel like an, a bayou is an improvement on Houston. Ooh. Houston is a bayou. And we've just lost all Bye of our Houston, Houston listeners. They so. left because they knew it was true. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're getting fancy today. It had wax, a wax seal on oh, it and yeah. everything. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I am really crossing my fingers for this one. It's got a great label. Yeah. The the little dead gingerbread man. Yes. That's, that, that's kind of But from cool. the right angle, looks like a penis. It does look like a penis from the yeah. right angle. Yeah. Well, is that the right angle or the wrong angle? I'm not... From the appropriate angle by which to it, see it. The angle of the dangle was definitely to the right when I saw it. So okay. I'm saying. All right. The right angle. <laughs> yeah. You know. <laughs> oi. Oi, oi. She's having a, having a Jewish moment now. This is, this is disturbing. All right. So, that looks so pretty. Oh, yeah. So while we're pouring everything, do you want to kind of give some background yeah. on why, we did the, why we're doing this show? So and? this show was actually inspired by Mike. Oh, God. He doesn't terrifying. know that. I guess he knows now. He finds out with everybody else. It's great. Um, but so for anyone who has listened to the show for very long, at some point you've probably heard um, Mike rail yes. on uh, on the word unique on when and people say things like very unique uh, or more unique uh, uh, or uh, uh, uniquest. In yes. fact, I even joked to John at one point of just doing the whole show of just saying more unique, more unique, I was more very, unique, I, more I've been, unique. I've been very concerned about that since you posted what we were talking about. Uh, I didn't say anything. I, I actually kind of immediately saw knew whenever John posted that, that you were talking about uniqueness. I'm like, they're, they're going to fuck with me. They're oh, yeah. going to fuck with me. It didn't matter what the show was, though. I mean, it's not because of the show's uniqueness, Mike. Let's be honest. That is true. Although this one is is uh, special. Special. Yes. Although we are actually going to, uh, once we have this one conversation that I want to have, yep. I actually do want to delve into um, uniqueness as a concept with aesthetics. So All right. we will actually hit some philosophy here. Um, but... So I guess I want to start from this idea that um, something cannot be more unique or very unique. Mm, yeah, it can't. And I feel <laughs> like the statement that something is more unique or very unique is actually, are you like getting like pains when making, I say that? Making my skin crawl, I'm yes. so sorry. Unique literally means one of a kind. Okay, so it does. However. You want me to read some definitions here? However, in my interpretation, whenever someone is saying that, is that they are not actually saying that this thing is one of a kind. They are saying that it is approaching the state of being one of a kind, which I think did, is did, valid. Then they need to use a different word. <laughs> so uh, let's let's start with definitions. I think definitions okay. are a good, a good okay. place to start. Uh, there's a few here. I'm on dictionary.com. I think is a pretty good source for definitions. Sure. Sure. Uh, so I what? love that squeaking your voice. Existing, uh, and this adjective, existing as the only one or as the sole example. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Uh, two, having no like or equal, unparalleled, uh, incomparable. Mm-hmm. Three, limited in occurrence to a given class, situation, or area. So that might be, you know, unique among numbers, you know, or unique among Israelites or something, you know. I can yeah. see that. That's okay. Yeah. Um, 
I like limited that to a single was... outcome or result without alternative possibilities. Certain types of problems have a unique solution. Absolutely. Not typical, unusual. She has a very unique smile. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what that word means. That's a modern connotation of it, and it fucking sucks. No, <laughs> but, no, no, I do not accept it. <laughs> but, uh, so... so we're going we're gonna to throw out the other four definitions and go with that one. I, I understand. Not necessarily. We're gonna, we're gonna, no, no, We're no. going to pick the definition that's, that, that's been on the, on the earth for about 15 minutes instead of the time-tested, uh, true definition that's, that we've had forever and ever and well, ever. Well, I think that we've recognized numerous times on this show that a word can have multiple definitions. Absolutely, absolutely. But I, we've also recognized that I'm a, I, I've got to stick up my ass when it comes to words. And, we have, uh, and I'm just hoping to, like, grab it and jiggle it around well, a little you're, bit. You're succeeding. <laughs> you are succeeding. Our next show will be literally. <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> but, but no. So we actually had a, 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 an interesting me. conversation. <laughs> we, we had an interesting conversation. I, I, I want to get some input from you on it. Uh, so when you talk about the literal, the number one definition of unique, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll use that. That's fine. Instead um, of the number five definition, yes. to be fair. Yeah. So when you talk about the number one definition of unique, um, it literally means one of a kind, right? Yeah. And under uh, modern understandings of how the universe works, um, actually one of the 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 fu- foundation fundamental not foundational fu- fundamental definitions and uh, uh, or principles in quantum physics is that uh, there can no- not be two particles that have the same quantum state. That means they okay. have all the same properties yeah. and occupy the same space. I actually understand that. That's, yeah. I, I was worried when you got into quantum physics, but I understand yeah. that. He's so, rattled that off enough times yeah. that it sank yeah. in. I didn't understand the first 75 times right. we talked about it. Yeah. So. so so understanding that any set of these particles that uh, all have uniqueness, because none of them are exactly the same, has to be unique because... No separate set of particles would be like any other separate set of particles, okay. even if they contain some of the same particles. Um, so if, if we go and, and speak very literally about unique, doesn't that then make everything unique? No, I don't think so. Be- uh, I think everything has a unique quality to it. There's something that is unique about everything. Mm-hmm. But in the way that it is often used, it, is, it, it doesn't mean that. Uh, you know, if, if uh, you know, the she has a very unique smile. Well, is it, is it sideways on her face? Is it, uh, you know, uh, uh, no, she doesn't have a very unique. First off, you can't be very one of a kind. So very is a meaningless one. But even she has a unique smile. Well, again, unless it's sideways on her face, probably not. Yeah. So so I think you actually brought up a really good point in that, that, that we discussed where we said, um, since everything, when taken to the extreme, can be unique yeah. because of what I just said. Sure. Uh, I think most of the time we talk in, in normal conversation, we're not talking about the quantum state of the individual particles in a yeah. person yeah. when we call them unique. But I think we also have to recognize that the property of being unique, uniqueness, can be achieved depending on how broadly or narrowly you talk about it without even going to that level. Oh, absolutely. Right. Agreed. So to that to to that we have to acknowledge that when we talk about something being unique, we talk within scopes. Mm-hmm. When you talk about the scope of a smile, yeah, you could probably find that some, turn things aligned. But what you mean is, I've never seen anything that triggered the same neurons in my head, you know, in another smile. Right? It, it's not recognizably. It is. Re- is it, no other smile is recognizably the same. Does that make sense? I I, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. I, I see where you're coming from. I, yeah. I, I think it's I, – I don't struggle with knowing what the person means when they say it. Right. Right. It just drives me crazy because it's, la- it's a lazy choice of words to me and it, when I hear it. That's not what that means. Use better words. Uh, yeah. So, uh, I, I, you know, I guess to, to, to wrap up and conclude the whole thing, uh, wouldn't it be a good use of terms to say – this, when looked at very narrowly, when, when very few factors are considered, still maintains the property of uniqueness, as opposed to other things where you have to consider a lot of factors before it achieves uniqueness. I mean, I, I guess so. I, I, again, I just it, it, it seems like, lang- like lazy language to me is all. Fair enough, fair yeah. enough. Anna? 
Uh, I, I think you made the the main point there. Um, just in, as far as speaking in degrees of uniqueness, um, and basically that I don't know. It was fun. I had yeah, a good time. But the thing is, uniqueness doesn't even mean beautiful. No, it, it doesn't. <laughs> and no. so, you know, and, and, and a lot of times when people say that. They, they're, they're always putting that positive connotation on something. Mm-hmm. If it's unique, it's good somehow, mm-hmm. which that's not what that means. Yeah, you know. It, I mean, it, it, Hitler had a, had a sense of uniqueness about him, uh, you know. Yeah, you know, Loki might have been very unique in a sense of destruction. Mm-hmm. So. Oh, be, sorry, I wouldn't even. Uh, oh, yeah. There might have been unique in a sense yeah, of destruction. Yeah. Um, so there's actually a theory that says that... Um, the thing that differentiates humans from other animals makes them unique among animals. Uh, toilet paper. It is Tell our me I'm wrong. drive to be different. So our drive to clean ourselves yes. differently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. I think you're right. I mean, bears kind of, but they still use rabbits, so that's, that's not <laughs> quite Wait a it. What? Rabbits. I've yeah. seen the commercials. Squirrels. They also use toilet paper. And oh, they I forgot love about yeah, that. Yeah, you're I forgot right. about you're that right. commercial. But only like the blue and purple bears. It was a joke way before his commercial. Yeah. <laughs> Did shit stick to your fur? No? Hey, come here. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no, I was the like only six when I heard that joke. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, the only bear poop joke I know is do bears shit in the woods? <laughs> The answer is yes, <laughs> in case you're unaware. Um, suddenly, suddenly, apparently on rabbits. Now, see, no, nobody's going to get that out this outside of this room, but all I can think of right now is bear cock. Yeah. yeah. So anyway. Um, yeah. Bear cock. Bear cock. All right. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Where were we? What are we moving into? Uh, so, uh, we, well, we were actually moving into something that I found while I was researching the show, but wasn't going to add in here. Um but it was this idea that um, the thing that differentiates humans from animals is our drive to be different, um, which I think allows the classification of something as being unique um, to take both a positive and a negative uh, application to it. Okay. Um, so we can definitely recognize that Hitler was unique. Um but well, not in a nice way. Let me ask, why do you think that we we have definitely as a society put a positive spin on the word unique, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think we can all recognize that. Why do you think that is? I mean, I, do we value things that are different? No, I think it's I think it's uh it's the same reason that um you know, we 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 use uh politically correct language. We 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 try to we try to couch things in positives. Uh you know, if somebody's got a fucked up, ma- fucked up m- mouth and their teeth are sticking out and they've got meth teeth and everything, they got a unique smile too. Mm-hmm. But if we can uh, couch it in something, po- you're very unique. <laughs> oh, you said it. I did. Uh, but as I, I, I <laughs> yes. said it kind of uh, sarcastically, tongue in cheek. Yes. Tongue in cheek. Um, but, um, well, I think we're looking at this from a, um, a very Western perspective. Um, because in the U.S. and a lot of Western countries, it is valued to be different. Um, it's valued to. Oh yeah, yeah. It's valued to be an innovator. It's valued to stand out from the crowd. Um, but in a lot of Eastern countries, um, conforming to the norm is way more highly valued than I it had is a, here. I had a professor for Japanese Civ when I was in college. Who, who, while he was American, he went and lived in Japan for like twenty years of his life. Mm-hmm. And uh, when he was trying to explain the difference in, in cultures to us, I can still remember it. He said, in the United States and in England, in Western world, we have a saying that the, the, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the grease, right? Mm-hmm. With some, you know, make a little noise, stick out. Right. It says the saying in Japan was the nail that sticks up gets hammered. Yeah. And, I mean, that, that kind of shows that, that different mentality there. Yeah, yeah. The, the illustration that I've, I've seen in my research on that is in both Western and Eastern civilizations, it is very common for whoever the leader is of an organization, whenever they all go out to eat, to order first. The boss orders mm-hmm. first. That's mm-hmm. very common. The diff- the main difference in the ordering procedure for Eastern and Western is in Western civilizations, the people who order after the boss will feel pressure to not order the same thing they did 
to the point that a lot of times they will order they will not order the thing they wanted because the boss ordered it. And in Eastern civilizations, they do the yeah. opposite. Everybody they will order gets what the boss got. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly what the boss got. Yeah, yeah. Here we say dress for the job you want. They're they're actually doing it. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, just something that I thought see, was. See, I always had a saying at work, but it pissed my boss off. I always parked for the job I wanted, but that you just parked at his spot. Yeah, I just yeah. I just parked at his spot. I was like, yeah. <laughs> so um, I did promise, maybe in my head, but I think to you guys that I would keep this show relatively short. Um, I've kind of liked the shorter shows that we've been doing. Yeah, I have to. I have so to. with that, we're going to move into the final element that I wanted to discuss. Second to final element that I wanted to yeah. discuss. The beer. Yeah, yeah. So about this beer, what do you guys think? Who wants to go? Uh, I don't want to go first. Okay. Damn it. I have typing to do. I got it then. Okay, good. What are we drinking, John? We are drinking gingerbread stout. This is a 2018 vintage. Okay, and uh, this is from the Buffalo Bayou Brewing Company in Houston, Texas. And um, I will tell you that before the show, y'all don't get to see the before the show stuff, but... Anna came in and said, I got another cookie beer. And I went, <laughs> oh, good. I was not excited about this uh, right. at, at all. Um, and I, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised with it. I, I actually, um, I, I do enjoy it. I think it's got a, it's got Just a nice. Just like the last cookie beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The last one was good too. The snickerdoodle or whatever. Yeah, that's what this, it was. Um, this, this one's got, got a, uh, it's got a very heavy spice uh, oh, flavor yeah. to it. But like it's molasses. A, it, there, there is a molasses feel in there. Yeah. I, 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 I do, I do pick that up. It's got, this, it's got a r real heavy spice feel, but it's not. It doesn't seem to get in the way of the beer feel either. Yeah. It's the, the beer is still here. Um, it does kind of hit you in the face. Yeah. It's, it's there, it, there, there's no bell curve. It kind of slams you in the face when you when you have it. I don't think I'd want to have more than one of these. Right. Um, I, th I think it would be too heavy. I think it would. Uh, I think it would pair well. Uh, after a dinner, you know, after I've had a steak or something, have this for like a dessert afterwards. Oh, yeah. uh, I think it would be great for that. I'm, I am a fan. I, I do think you have to be a beery to like this. You do, and and you you have to, you have to be a more relaxed company. This is not your casual drinking no, beer. No, no, it, yeah. uh, it, it it's definitely a beery drink. Uh, I'm gonna go pretty high on this one. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go three five. Three five. All right. You want me to go next? Uh, I can go next. Um, so you can definitely taste the ginger in it. Um, the spice profile is really complimentary. I think it does a great job. I love the hints of molasses that you get in there. Um, just, I think puts this beer over the top. Um, it's a good stout in general. It's got a good body to it. Um, just, I mean, you look at it and it's absolutely gorgeous. The lighting's not great in here, but it's a gorgeous beer. Um, much like myself. You are a gorgeous beer, Mike. I am a gorgeous beer. <laughs> but, uh, I have thoroughly enjoyed drinking it. The ABV is a bit high, so you'll want to be careful. Um, but all in all, I think it's fantastic and I give it a 3.9. Okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come in a little lower than both of y'all, but before I, uh, you know, I'll just give my rating up front, then I'll, I'll talk about the beer. I'm going to give it a 3-0. Um, so I want to talk about a few different aspects. First of all, uh, I, I, I want to talk about this bottle. Uh, I absolutely love what's going on here. It's, oh, it's, I do too. It's very vintage. There's not, I, don't get me wrong. I love a lot of the cool stories you get to read on beers, but I love what they did here. It's just very forward, straight to the point. Uh, you even have trouble like finding out the uh, the beer company because it's all in, in fine print. And then they took it, they sealed it up, um, and I would guess with a small capping machine uh, based on the type of cap it is. Um, and then they dip the whole thing in wax. Now, a lot of times when you see a dipped bottle, they have that whole plastic thing where you can just rip it. No, no, no. We had to... It, you know, uh, for those who aren't watching, we had to get a butter knife out and cut <coughs> the wax. It they literally just dip the whole yeah, thing yeah. and and let it go. Uh, I love that whole vintage look, uh, and they took a really great product and put it in a really low cost packaging. And I, I don't know why that's so appealing to me, but but it's just it it's looks straight sharp. It's straightforward. It's about the beer. I guess I, yeah, I guess yeah. is what it is. Okay. All that said, let's move on to the beer. Y'all keep mentioning molasses, and something I want to clear up because it puts images in my head that I don't think represent this. 
is this is not a really thick beer. It's a medium viscosity beer. No, it's beer. not thick. Um, and yeah, it's not the feeling of molasses that you're getting at all. Right. As far as the, the, the spice profile, it is, you know, y'all are mentioning the ginger, and it's definitely there, but this is very clove forward. To the extent, for anyone who's ever, like, taking clove and just eating it, it gives yeah. you a slight numbing sensation in your mouth, and I actually pull that off of this beer whenever I drink it. I think that's the ginger more, but uh, but, but but I see what you're what you're getting at. The yeah. place where I get the clove is when I exhale after I swallow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I can taste it on my cheeks and my mouth when I do that. Yeah, uh, this is it was definitely a a very high gravity when it was first made because even though it's been brewed down to a high VV, there's still a lot of sugars lingering in it. Uh, I agree with you. They did a very good job of, of walking that line between cookie and beer, and that's that's why it is getting a three. Uh, that said, I, I it, if I, I'm rating it as a beer, and there are just other beers I like better, and I'm I'm not yeah, gonna yeah. go. I think, go yeah. I think that's very fair. I think that's very cool. Very cool. So, well, if I see this again, I would I would probably get it. Yeah, I would yeah. too. I yeah. would too. Just for, the, the whole beer experience is good with it. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. 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 Uh, did, did, did you get that 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 just smack you in the face feel when you oh, had yeah, it? Oh, yeah, yeah. The yeah. spices really hit you. Yeah. Yeah, it is a flavor-forward beer, for Absolutely. sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, let's play our game. All right. All right. So on dates, uh, I'm actually going to disagree with, with you a little bit on... Um, I agree you have to be a beery to like it, but um, I, I would almost, like, throw this in there on a first date... Uh, just as a conversation piece. I mean, this is a beer you you talk about, and I think it's one that's going to have broad appeal. Yeah. Um, I I think that most people aren't, you know, when they think of beer, aren't going to think this. I am being a bit sexist in this evaluation because a lot of times when you think of of women, uh, they're they're not really into the beer scene. They're they're into either wine or, or something a little bit sweetener. I think this would be a really great bridge for them. Although, I think it's also a beer that wouldn't insult a girl who was into beer. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm going to put this as a first date beer. Okay. We haven't had a first date beer in a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it's a big gamble, but I... Well, and I think the audience that will not pour this out, they'll drink it, maybe it won't be their favorite thing, um, but I think the audience that that this beer has is a bit wider for the simple fact that it is still pretty sweet. Yeah. And, well, they'll, they'll know you're a beery. Yeah. yeah. Let, let me, I need to qualify something because I, I was a sexist again in that whole evaluation. This is a first date beer for a guy, for a girl. Uh, because if, if you get your typical, you know, industrial beer person guy, he's not going to like this. I don't think, I don't think your Budweiser guy is going to like this. Maybe if you don't tell him it's beer. Yeah. Maybe. Or maybe if you just find out he's not into this and like kick him to the curve, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, this is a first date beer if you're a chick going out with a dude all day long. Because um, if he doesn't like this, he's not going to like you. If he's an industrial beer kind of person, you, and you shouldn't like him. Anyway. Yeah, move honestly. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, He doesn't have any taste anyway. If he asks if he... He probably if, listens to Taylor Swift. If he asks if he can buy you a drink and you say, yeah, I'll take a Shiner. Because that's the best beer that they have at the bar. And he goes, that's six dollars. Like, dude, I was buying my own beers before. <laughs> if that story sounded very specific, <laughs> it, was. it was. Not me. No. But it was. No, it was not. Uh, but uh, I love it. Yeah. I love it. Anyway, That's your turn, $6. Anna. $6. Yeah. Um, will it get you laid? I think absolutely. Obviously, at a 10% ABV, you want to be careful with this. Um, it is in the Cosby realm. Um, but I, being a conversation starter... Um, having a lot of flavor. If they like beer, this is going to impress them. It is a special release, not something that's going to be around all the time. Um, so, you know, you're already bringing something special to the table. I think this this is the kind of beer that can seal the deal. I just got to say that anytime I go on a date, I bring something special to the table. Yeah, but you got to bring something else because oh, you can't lay okay. that out on the table <laughs> in public. I was talking about my personality, but... Uh, oh. I don't know. Oops. I, 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 thought, I, I do appreciate it. Um, <laughs> See, I thought he meant he pulled out his fine china every time. Oh, so, yeah. oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> he just carries I, his fine I, china to the I, restaurant I, and I, sets it yeah. out. Look, look, if I want to nickname my penis fine china, I can do that, okay? <laughs> That's a good name for <laughs> a, a penis. a good nickname. It is a good nickname, isn't it? I like Did it. Did we pull um, out the fine china? <laughs> 
Uh, not a lot more beer. That's no. enough. <laughs> you know? No, yeah, not, not a lot more beer. No. I, I will say one more thing to say about this beer. It pairs well with coffee, actually. It does pair well with yeah, coffee. Yeah, it does. So, um, all right. Uh, also pairs well with, with uh, podcast conversations with two assholes. Yeah, I would say, yeah, I'm sitting here with two assholes. I was, I was, yeah. yeah, you and yeah. me both. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Anna would one's know. got a stick up its ass. Anna wouldn't know because she's only sitting here Cosmo, with one asshole. do you hear how he's oh. talking about you? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Right. So okay. what, what do we got next here on the uh, program? Sorry, I'm, a, I'm over here like writing down our notes about the beer so I can do it later. Um, so anyway, we're actually going to step into aesthetics with this one. And we're going to ask the question, what is art? Actually, that's not true. We're going to... <laughs> <laughs> I think we did that one. I love it when Hold she does on. this. We did. We asked, what is art? This time... We're going to answer it. We're answering it. Six times at least. <laughs> Next time on Six Pack Philosophy. <laughs> Shut up, John. Will same answer? bat time, same bat channel. Uh, oh, that is an old reference. No, you see, it's funny yes. because we both did that, and I think different generations are going to recognize it. <laughs> that is true. I did Dragon Ball Z, you did Batman. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. That was pretty generic. Like, yours was pretty generic for every cartoon of that generation, though. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. I, anyway. I not, didn't watch the cartoons in that generation. Obviously. Not the point, though. So. Um, My glass is broken. No, it's empty. And there's a really easy way to fix that. Okay. It's much harder to fix glass when it's broken. Uh, so, anyway. What is art? There are several schools of thought that um, attempt to answer this question. And I thought it was super fun. There's one that actually addresses uniqueness specifically. We'll touch on that one, and then we'll go through the other. Is it the DeVry Institute of Art? No. No, just checking. You're talking about schools of art, so I just wanted to go with it. I'm going to push you out of your chair. <laughs> like that's never happened before. It hasn't. You always stop it. So anyway. Uh <laughs> <laughs> you prevent me with your physical force. <laughs> All right, so first <laughs> school of thought. Mike is dying. It's um, great. I mean, terrible. Oh, shut up. <laughs> if he dies, would you go ahead and push him? <laughs> I could finally do it. <laughs> so anyway, first school of thought um, is essentialism, mm -hmm. which essentially says that <laughs> there has to be uh, some common feature among... Uh, there has to be some common feature that makes it art. So this could be, um, and, and essentialists disagree a lot on what that common feature has to Imagine be. Imagine that, philosophers that disagree. Shocker, right. Um, so it could be something like it's got to be carved out of stone or um, it's got to be made by somebody who is broken high or a representation of something that so, is real so all art must have a common an undefined common feature <laughs> no the, i would agree with that the wider group i think we could go even wider and say everything has an undefined common feature it exists <laughs> so the umbrella of essentialists agree that there has to be a, a common feature and then they break off into smaller groups, and then they define what that feature is. This is this is the group that will look at things like piss Jesus and say that's not art. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or is uh, art? Well, yeah, or is you know, yeah. but, but there's a lot of people that or or they'll look at abstract things and say that's not represent that doesn't represent anything. Yeah. That's not art. Like they could say um, art has to imitate life. Yeah. And so if it is not imitating life, then it is not art. Well, we had that discussion on one of the shows about the white painting that was all... Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't... I feel like we're getting so far away from our, our topic here. Uh, doesn't um, the fact of it being created through life mean that it imitates life? I mean, not necessarily, but maybe. Depends on how you define that, that essential element, I guess. Yeah. Um, Getting back to uniqueness, there is actually a um, school of thought within essentialism that says that the uh, essential property for something to be art is that it be unique, which I find to be interesting considering the earlier conversations that we were having that given the correct parameters, everything is unique. Well, but if, if, if I go buy a print of a painting... 
it's not art anymore because it's not unique. Yeah. Well, so so here's a question. Because I think there's two things here, right? So, for instance, whenever I say bamboo, there is the word I said and the thought it represents. Yeah. So is the original represent thing it's representing still art, but the act of printing it's not art, maybe? Yeah, yeah. I think, you see, I, what, I, you yeah, see what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I think, yeah. I think you're on the right track there. Yeah, okay. And, and so then, but that, that does bring up something interesting. Mm-hmm. It ha- we, we've now added a temporal element to this whole conversation because it has to be unique at the time. Right. Because if it wasn't, as soon as a print was made, if it was a near exact representation, it would unart the thing. Uh, well, right. I'll, 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 go, I'll go further. Mm-hmm. We're talking about uniqueness here while we're doing it. If the original work is art, Star Wars. Fine. Star Wars. We're talking about movies. Star Wars is art. Is a Star Wars fan film art? Yeah, fan fiction. No, fan film. That's a big thing on YouTube now where they mm-hmm. actually take and they make films and, and, add, and, and go with the story. Well, lines. I mean, it, it's the same thing as making fan fiction about... Fan fiction. Um, it's fan fiction yeah, art. Okay. It's the same concept. Yeah. Oh, so because you're using... You're, I mean, it's not something you... you know, you're taking something else and you're making something unique. Is, right. that, is that then art? Yeah, so I'll give you an example. I watched the entire first uh, Star Wars New Hope. I'm sorry. <laughs> I haven't seen it in a long time. Oh, no, it's worse than that. Uh, somebody wrote a program that built the whole thing and ran through all the scenes using ASCII art. I watched the entire thing with ASCII art. I don't know what that is. ASCII mm-hmm. art is where you take like an at sign and a pound sign and you draw oh pictures God, with really? the... Oh, my really? Oh, my. Yeah, the whole first, the whole New Hope written, done in ASCII art with, with audio overlay to the original... Yeah, it was just ASCII art. Well, I got to tell you, I, I I fell in love with Star Wars: A New Hope when it came out as a kid. I, I did, it was like my favorite movie, all time favorite movie. Loved it. Mm-hmm. It was nineteen seventy seven. I was five. Mm-hmm. I tried watching it the other day. I can't fucking watch it. The the graphics are too bad. It's the just, story it's sucks. Just, it's, it's just so elementary. It's such have an you seen, elementary story. Have you seen where they remastered it? Maybe you need to watch the new, the digitally remastered <laughs> with Jabba the Hut in in the first yeah, episode. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Are you, okay, I'm just I'm, I'm just, offering. Uh, I, I I just think it's gotten to the. Maybe I've just I've just read enough that I look at it and uh, it, there's there's nothing unique about it. It's it's it is so derivative of everything else. But see, so so that's that's well, so many of the stories are. Yeah, it, it, it's it's space western. That's that's that that is interesting because when you talk about uniqueness, mm-hmm. when you talk about something being different from everything else, if I take if I take something. Say this. Oh, this is actually a perfect example. So if I take a bottle opener and I make a new bottle opener, I've not made something unique. It is still a bottle opener. If I take a screwdriver and make a new screwdriver, it's not unique. It's a screwdriver. But if I take elements from both a bottle opener and a screwdriver and I combine them into a new thing, have I made something unique? Sure you have. And I wouldn't argue that it's not art. I would just argue that it's not as good of art as I remember it being. But but that brings up an interesting and non-intuitive point. Copying something is not art, but copying two things, that's art. Well, uh, well it's the amalgamation of the two. Yeah, it's, apple you know, uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> an, an, apple, an apple is not art. Apple pie can be. Yeah. You've made something with it. P-P-A-P. No, I said apple pen. Uh, well, I know, and I, I, <laughs> but I, I changed it. No. Oh, artfully. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, you said apple. And that's what yeah, no, I, apple, I get it, I get it. An apple isn't, but making an apple pie could be. Could be, yeah. yeah. So, it was the first one. Yeah, or you did something different with it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you make an apple pie, and instead of doing a traditional lattice, you do like some crazy rose shit on there. Fantastic. Sex you art. have made, or that, or you make anime sex art tentacle <laughs> porn <laughs> on your pie. And you Whatever. know, this actually uh, becomes a rather interesting That's definition okay. because it 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 actually brings around a few things that I I think weren't included in previous definitions of art that we discussed. Yeah. But we're kind of seem like art, for instance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jesus toast. Mm-hmm. Now, that, accidental art. Uh, yeah, exactly. But it was unique among. I don't think the toast is art. I think the person that recognized it made it art. So, meth. <laughs> <laughs> so, the recognition of the accident is art. That would actually fall in line with. I feel like it was Kent, but that seems weird. Isn't that kind of what photographers do? 
yeah. particularly nature photographers, yeah. they, they, they look at it something, and that is not art until they look at it and, and, and frame it and, and create it. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, but that, that's the value in a photographer is, the witness. is that they frame it, they, they see it in its best way, and they capture it. And, but, or and, worse, and, like, depending. And then we have the, the, we can go even deeper with this and go, is it art when it's created or is it not art until it's appreciated? So, so you talk about uniqueness here, right? You could argue if I take a photograph of something that I didn't produce something unique because it already existed. Mm -hmm. But if I had a filter to it, did I uniqueify it? <laughs> uniqueify. Oh, my. I like uh, that word. John, you are, you are adding to the list of reasons why I want to kill you. He does that all the time. Yeah. For you? Yes. Okay. All the time. I feel eventually I'll hit a critical mass. I'm just, it's a <laughs> science experiment. Next week on Six Pack Philosophy, it'll be Six Pack Philosophy like with Mike and Anna. Yeah, it seems like a potentially fatal science experiment. <laughs> I guess it's worked lots so of far. them are. Yeah. Lots of them are. So anyway, moving on from uniqueness and essentialism. But, uh, or not. Back to my question. Oh, you had a question. Yeah. So does the filter then yeah, make so. it art? <sighs> if it's appreciated by somebody as, as something unique, yeah. Yeah, sure. I could say that. I, I would even argue that the capturing of the image. Um, you framed it. You picked, is, what, you picked what was behind it. You picked. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you you observed it. You it's recognized. It's not art when I do it. Well, and, and today I took a, a picture for Snapchat uh -huh. that I intentionally made blurry. Was it of your penis? Uh, no. Uh, although that's a good method for next time, I'll write that down. <laughs> um, no, but I was I was running on a treadmill and I was trying to convey the idea of like moving fast. So I intentionally made my picture blurry and like you know made myself sweaty and and but but you, you were already sweaty. I was sweaty, um, <laughs> but I I intentionally made it blurry and it was it was the the act of the lensing. And the motion and the amount of time it took to capture that image that created the blur that was not there in reality, yeah, yeah. all made that unique from the thing sure that was. was there. Sure it was. Yeah. yeah. You know? Well, it was the crafting of the thing in your head into a thing that could be observed and appreciated by other yeah. people. Yeah. And I, I think that is a lot of what art is. Can we move on now? Uh, sure. We'll move on. Okay. So... You're in charge. I don't know. Uh, so next school of thought is functionalism, which uh, Socrates would appreciate. My boy. Um, oh, damn. I meant to go into the cave earlier. Missed it. Oh, well. Um, so Socrates, I think, would appreciate functionalism. Maybe we've been in the cave this whole time. We have. Oh, my God. We're always in the cave. Uh, this one's super easy. Anything that is art has to serve a function. Now, just like with essentialism... The umbrella definition does not say what that function is, but there are breakdowns within it that do. Um, example I have is that the function could be to evoke an emotion. Um, I know that's what my art teacher always said, but they didn't really give us, she didn't really give us opinions other than what hers was and what was in the book. But I have a problem with, with taking functionalism. I don't even necessarily agree with functionalism, mm -hmm. but to make it so broad as ev evoking an emotion, because... You could then argue from that, and I think most artists would not appreciate this, that, well, why did you make this? I, had, I was trying to make money. That's functional. Yeah. I mean, well, sure, it is. Sure, that's what pop art is. Yeah. yeah. So, that's what Andy Warhol is. Yeah, that's, that's who I was going to say, yeah. that one. Yeah. Although and I like I, a lot of pop art. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the Campbell's Soup. Campbell's Soup, Coca-Cola, people that collect that those things. That was all about... But see, making a dime and and I don't dollar. I don't like that definition and and I'll tell you why. As an engineer, I make a lot of things that are functional and make money, for the purpose of making money. And I don't consider myself, and I don't think it is fair for me to call myself an artist anymore. And I I think it is fair for an artist to call themselves an engineer. I think both of us would have issue with the other one. So by that definition, everything I'm doing is art, and I just don't feel like it is. Well, and that was actually something that I wanted to address here, is that it would seem that um, the things that are considered art by essentialism and the things that are considered art by, uh, well, I guess they're not, I was going to say they're, they're grossly separate, but they don't have to be. But um, I think that functionalism would 
or could, I suppose, seriously change what we consider to be art. Um, you know, elevators. I don't know if it's in the shot here, but there's a globe behind John's head. It's in the shot. Um, okay. Oh, so, it's behind my head, but I mean, oh, it's, it's okay. framed. Yeah. In there's the- a globe right back here. And like, it has a function. We mm-hmm. like find places in the world on it and, and look at things and it's pretty and it lights up and has constellations. Like it has a bunch of functions. It's, it's nice to look at. I think that it could be argued through functionalism that that is art. That, that, um, that's a tool to uh, to convince people yeah. that the, the globe Earth is real and not, not no, we don't live on a planet. Sheeple. There's that. <laughs> um, that, I think, makes... Uh, functionalism allows buildings to be art. Um, you know, they are fulfilling a function, but sure. they are aesthetically, uh, aesthetically pleasing. Sure. It also makes those prints that we talked about of the Mona Lisa art. Yeah. Right. There's also that. Um, so that's functionalism. Ugliest Pretty simple. Ugliest painting I ever saw. I, I, I don't get. I don't get the Mona Lisa ugly ass yeah. painting. I think the artist was just so popular. That oh point. my god. Okay, you, we're gonna have to share this on the YouTube. But uh, Cosmo, yeah. our uh, producer at the moment. Technically art historian. Okay, sorry. Actually, art she historian. is an art historian. Um, oh, is that her degree? Yeah. Shared a picture of two men dressed as yeah, avocado halves that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, with their bellies out. Amazing. I'll put it up there. It's not yeah, helpful art. for you to. It, it, it definitely art. Definitely art. Yeah, apparently. Makes me want to go eat avocados. Really? No. Really? No, not at all. Okay. Because we got some in the other room. Yeah, we do. Yeah. None <laughs> of them are ripe. Do they look like that? Oh, yeah. So <laughs> sexy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but anyway. So after functionalism is uh, institutionalism. Which is an interesting one. It's basically that art is whatever the art world says that it is. Yeah, fuck that. Right. Um, so obviously there are the simple questions of... Well, Not all um, ivory towers are, cons- are created but, equal. But, 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 but I, <laughs> I get it. I get that because yeah. you know every profession has that. Well, you, you know, your statement earlier about being an engineer, an engineer is what... Y'all say an engineer is not what other people say an engineer is. Uh, I'm, a, you know, a teacher. I'm, I'm, I feel the same way about that. I understand the the, the logic behind mm-hmm. it. I do get it. Yeah. I think it's wrong headed, but I, I do get it. Yeah, I mean, I, and I, I would have to agree with you. And, and and I'll even agree with you from a place of that is right. Engineers accredit other engineers. We learn from other engineers. I don't like the system. Uh, but I agree that's how it is. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Well, and then... Um, By the way, I want to uh, mm-hmm. add a rule to our drinking game that we had there. Oh, yeah? I want to add a rule in that every time John announces that he's an engineer on the air, we have to drink. What about every time you announce you're a teacher? That Absolutely. That goes on there, too. Okay. All right. What about every time you announce you're a vegan? I've never announced that. It would be ta- a terrible drinking rule. How about every time that John and I say you're a vegan? People would die. <laughs> How about every time you announce you're from California? I've Fucking never Yankee. done that. Goddamn Yankee. All right. I've still never done that because I'm not. <laughs> not the point, though. So anyway, uh, the thing with institutionalism um, is that there is no pretext for the institutions of the art world to define what art is. Um, it is. It's kind of like... The judge in the porn case who said, who when asked what porn, you know. Oliver Wendell Holmes. Yes. And he said, I'll know it when I see it. Yeah. Right. Um, that's essentially what this school of thought allows for the people who are currently in positions of esteem in the art world to do. Is to porn say, art? Mm-hmm. I think so. I think it can be. Yeah. Depends Sometimes it's definition. bad art. But, Depends on your definition. You yeah. know, if you if you don't think commercialism is art, then no. But yeah. you know. Um, so I think you'll you'll have an interesting take on this. Um, next school of thought is the historical definition, um, which is basically that um, to be art, something has to fit into recognized historical tradition. Obviously, the issue with that is going to be uh, the origination. It makes Nothing's it- art. Well, it makes it really hard to, to develop new art. It, also that. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay, pick a point in time, and when could anything become art? So if nothing yeah. could ever become art, then nothing is art. Well, in the past. 
Yeah. The times in the past. Yeah. So <laughs> something could be art if it pulls from um, the, I, I guess now it a, could pull from Picasso. It yeah. could pull from this Van is, Gogh. This is the definition. Uh, now, I never heard this definition, but this is the way the art history class that I took in college was taught. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, I, I'm very familiar with this right. idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, this one is fun. Anti-essentialism. Anti-essentialism, okay. So, essentially, this rejects the or question. anti-essentially. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah. Uh, this one essentially... God, I can't <laughs> stop. Um rejects the question of what is art and kind of throws its hands up and says it can't be defined. Um, art is whatever. See, and, and that's one of those definitions that I think is correct and it drives me batshit crazy. Yeah. So um, uh, Ludwig Wittgenstein actually... That's not a real name. What? That's not a real name. But it is. Ludwig Wittgenstein? Yes. Did he invent, did he invent the, the, the monster? Is he, is he Frankenstein's brother? Is, is he a hero from a 1938 black and white MGM? Maybe. So anyway, I actually think he's in a Heath Ledger movie. Uh. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so he actually spoke considerably on games. Um, and one of the things that he said was that um, there is no singular feature of a um, that can be attributed to games. And so... Using this kind of idea, you can see that uh, essentialism would start to break down. Yep. This idea that there is a feature that is common among everything. I actually kind of disagree with this one from the perspective that the essential feature of a game is that there is a winner. I was having a really hard time figuring out a game for which there's no winner. Now, now you were you were or for a, which the object is not to win. You were involved in scouts and you can't come up with a game where there was no winner. Yeah, tag. <laughs> Whoever won tag. If you won tag, raise your hand. Well, you lost tag every time you got tagged. Uh, and then you tagged somebody else. And yeah. then they, uh, which meant you won. No, you didn't. Uh, yeah, you won that round. I remember that in Cub Scouts. There are no winners and losers. Bullshit. There's always winners and losers. You were in a different troop than I was. I was a leader in the troop that your kid was in. That is true. Maybe that was just when you were leading. No, we changed it when I was leading. <laughs> Maybe yeah. I just ignored everybody yeah. and picked yes, winners and that, losers anyway. That, that is a fact. <laughs> nah, bitch. We got winners here and losers over there. Yeah. Um, so I do find this to be interesting. He He kind of talks about how there are... Things that are that resemble each other um, talks about games with balls resemble other games that use balls. Yeah, um, <laughs> John, well, can games. I not say balls without making you laugh? No, balls, no. <laughs> balls, sweaty balls. Oh, see, I got you now. Oh, um, we are we are like ten year olds. Oh. Uh, yeah. Does it feel good, Mike? Mm, kind of, good, never baby. I'm not going to say that. Um, <laughs> Do the balls feel good? But, so this one also ended up being, uh, going a little bit further and saying, well, if if you can find these, re- these resemblances, um, you can, kind of like we were talking about earlier, stretch what it is that could be resembled so far that all of a sudden it doesn't mean anything, which then just brings you all the way back around to art can't be defined, kind of arguing in favor after arguing against anti-essentialism again. Okay. Um, And then the last one, the one (laughs) that I think we are... It just keeps going. I know. It's like the uh, the cuts at the end of an Avengers movie or something. They just keep going and going and going. So... Why if you you've enjoyed this show, after this? you can hit us up on Patreon, or you can support the show on Patreon by going to patreon.com slash sixpackphilosophy. You can get some super cool swag by going to teespring.com slash store slash sixpackphilosophy. Um, you can find us on social media by go- searching sixpackphilosophy or hit up our website for super cool, fun content at sixpackphilosophy.com. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We've had fun and we hope you have too. Cheers. 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 
Six Pack Philosophy is supported by independent philosophers just like you. If you would like to support us, go to sixpackphilosophy.com and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. 